Hello! This week we're reading some aquatic survival horror and some Ray Bradbury. Welcome to the reading vlog. Wednesday, the last few days I've been reading Whale Fall by Daniel Krauss. I plan on finishing over the next two days. I, I, I thought the cover was very compelling. That was the main reason I got this. Every Christmas I get a gift card for Barnes and Nobles and then I try to buy books based off their cover. And I got this, my wife read it, she said it was amazing. I've heard a lot of good things about this story, not just from online, but also from my wife, and I trust her opinion. She finished this book, and she said she was crying, it was amazing, and she couldn't wait for me to read it. It's the story about the complex relationship between a father and a son. A narcissistic, abusive, bad dad who was obsessed with diving, all things marine life. And he raised his son to be a diver, and his son did not want to be a diver. And he forces some into this passion, into this world that's actually kind of dangerous. And it talks about, like, the traumatic experience of this son being raised by his dad, while also doing time jumps to the present where he's looking for his dad's remains. And we're figuring out things about his life and about his dad's life. And I think one reason why I'm only, like, 70 pages in, but the story bugs me in one way because I can't stand parents who are passionate about a hobby and then force their kids into that hobby. And I see this every day because I'm a professional fighter. Fighting's like a cult. If you fight, you want your family to fight because it's such a key part of like your life and your experiences. So a lot of like fighters, they 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 go into the sport that like chews them up, spits them out, ruins their lives, ruins their health, and then you put their young children in it, and they force their kids to like go into this fight life, and I hate that. Like I love the life I have. I love what fighting has got me. But I would never put my kids into fighting. Because, I mean, it's painful, but also, like, it's it's their life. It's not my life. And I feel like I'm already doing something, chasing my passion, chasing my bliss. I can't imagine just forcing that on a child, no matter how good it is. Uh, that, like, you've been, how good it is the thing you've been obsessed with in your life. So I look at this, I'm reading this book, and this dad's a diver. And diving's very dangerous. And he put his kid into it. And I'm like, I can't imagine, I can't relate, because I'm living my life in a way to make sure that my children never have to do the things that cause me pain. So right away, that's one negative for me personally as an individual for this book. But I'm finding it pretty interesting to like read all the descriptions of things diving in marine life. And that stuff's very interesting to me because I'm terrified of the ocean. I've never really, I don't read anything marine or aquatic adjacent in my reading because the ocean is such a giant space and it's dark and it's cold and it's dangerous. I love My wife loves anything ocean related, but that's very jarring, very uncomfortable for me. Don't sons have responsibilities too? The answer is yes, they do, to hold their fathers accountable. No one carries the best parts of themselves. The best parts are those held inside of others. Thursday, I'm on about page 215 of Wellfall be finishing it probably early tomorrow, early afternoon. One of the things that bugs me, that constantly knocks me out of the story for this book, is it takes place in 2021. So the virus that shall not be named is like featured very prominently. And the author and the main character are just so concerned about this crazy virus that is destroying the world and that's going to upturn civilization as he knows it. And I just think about all the books that are featured during this time period. And, like, our children in 15, 20 years down the line will be like, why do these books mention this virus that I don't, I've never heard of because it's no longer important? And I'm like, dang, what a way to make your book dated. I can't imagine experiencing 2020 and 2021 and being like, yeah, I want my escapism to constantly talk about this thing that's made me, probably the reason you finished this book, honestly, gave you the time to write the book. But, like, I want to talk about this pandemic that all that made us all, you know, start making our own sourdough starters and started knitting and quilting, doing picking up all these random hobbies. It's just a really weird thing the author constantly mentions. But I have finally hit the tipping point, the inertia point for me in this story where I am getting like super invested. Because our main character is literally stuck between a life stuck in between a life and death battle between a giant squid and a sperm whale. And then even crazier things happen. Like, this book is wild. The, the father-son relationship is wild, abusive, but also very relatable. If you had a parent that was very domineering, 
then yeah, I think this book could be very triggering for you. If you had a child that was just an ungrateful child who just resented their family, this would also be a very triggering read for you. I don't like any of the characters, or not any of the human characters. I like the marine animals quite a lot. But yeah, this book is a weirdie. A single life is nothing but a spark. The explosion is everything after death. The generations of reverberations. Every consumed morsel of your body, your wisdom, your kindness, your art, is another bid for perfection. A chance to get it right this time, or next time, or the time after that. At 7.11 on Saturday, I finished Whalefall. I enjoyed it. I cried once. The ending was a little rushed. That's the only complaint I have about it. And I would say that survival horror, survivor thrillers that take place in the ocean aren't my cup of tea. I hate the ocean. I have a fear of it. You'll never see me scuba diving, surfing, parasailing, anything ocean related. Not my thing. I've seen too many movies. And now I have read this book. That being said, this book was very emotional. And I'm surprised that it resonated strongly with me because at the center of the story, it's like about the relationship between a father and son. And I didn't grow up with a father figure. So that's generally something that like falls on deaf ears for me because I don't relate strongly to the whole father-son dynamic because it's just, it's foreign to me. But I did cry at one point about 75, 80% through the story where it was talking about like the responsibilities that children have towards their parents. We always talk about like the duty of parents for their children and parents obviously and clearly have more that responsibilities in that relationship but in, in this book and it's not a spoiler like his father is sick and his father is dying and the son feels no sense of responsibility like to treat his father right to continue to like keep up with that relationship and a lot of the characters in the book resent the protagonist because of that and it makes him a very unlikable protagonist because clearly you have a dying parent, you've got some duties, you've got some responsibilities there, and our entitled, very whiny protagonist does not think that. And that selfishness is kind of at the center of this book. And I was like, there's no way this protagonist is going to be redeemed. There's no way I'm going to care about this relationship because the father seemed abusive and the kid sucks. Like, objectively sucks. But it got me in the feels towards the end. And if you if you love, like, daring escapes against long odds like this book is crazy this book this book can, can compete with any of the marine survival movies you've ever seen because crazy things happen giant squid sperm well macgyver like attempts at escape hopeless moments there's so many factoids about marine life in this book that are all cited towards the end he talks about his acknowledgments about all this like journals he read and the scientists he spoke to so very scientifically and biologically accurate and i love footnotes footnotes are sexy so finish well fall i'm gonna finish zen in the art of Write writing by ray bradbury i started reading that like two weeks ago i have about half of it left i'll be finishing that tomorrow and hopefully a volume of manga Sunday, the final page count for this week is 426 pages. Not too shabby. I finished Zen in the Art of Writing. I didn't get to a volume of manga, but that's okay because I loved Ray Bradbury's Zen in the Art of Writing. One thing I appreciate about, appreciate about Ray Bradbury is he reminds me so much of Stephen King and the way he views his craft. Ray Bradbury is not a big fan of, like, waiting for shots of inspiration. He's a fan of getting to work, finding relaxation, finding your zen, and moving forward. The most important thing for an artist, work. The second most important thing, relax. After you relax, what do you do? More work, more effective, more efficient work. And he talks a lot about how inspiration is like a cat. You don't go looking for a cat. Cats are very aloof. You chase after them, they say they're like, they walk away from you. But the moment you ignore them, they're like, Hey, screw you. Why aren't you paying attention to me? And they follow you around. That's how, kind of how inspiration is. Reminded me a lot of Stephen King's book on writing and the way he views art. I, I haven't read this in a few years. I'm going to have to reread this. But just the way they view art, because so many people are like, you know, like meditation, prayer, reading things, watching things. Those are all, you know, 
easy answers for how do you find, like, inspiration. But Ray Bradbury and Stephen King are both just like, live your life, don't think about it, and when you enter that flow state, the stories will come, and I believe that. One other thing Ray Bradbury says in his book that I really appreciate that resonated very strongly with me, that's also in Rick Rubin's, you know, art, A Way of Being, is you don't write for the audience. You write the best art for yourself. You don't write to impress highbrow intellectuals. You don't write to be on the bestseller list. You just write the best story you can based off of your life experiences. And Ray Bradbury talks about this particular occurrence that happens in the life of all artists, or you hope happens in the life of all artists. It's when somebody walks up to you just a, while you're going about your day, and they say, I really loved your work. And I've had that happen as a professional MMA fighter. I've had people just walk up to me when I'm at Sam's Club, when I'm at Walmart, when I'm out shopping, and just be like, I watched this fight from here, you, and it was really beautiful stuff, and I appreciate you, and I love your, I love your athletic career. I'm a big fan, and I'm not extrinsically motivated. But whenever that happens, it is just an incredibly humbling and touching experience for me. Just to have someone kind of appreciate your art, to appreciate something that you're very passionate about. You don't do it for other people, but it's nice to be acknowledged, it's nice to be appreciated. So yeah, I read that part from Ray Bradbury's book, and I'm like, you, he gets it, he gets it. Also, Ray ba Bradbury's poetry, severely underrated. He has like the last chapter of Zen and the Art of Writing, it's just a bunch of his poems. And they were really good, I wasn't anticipating that. I do think he might be one of the most versatile authors of the last hundred years. And I think I, f I feel very confident saying that. So this week was a pretty dang good week. I finished some aquatic thriller horror and I loved it even though I maybe didn't enjoy the, exp the experience for the most part while reading it. And I finally finished Zen in the Art of Writing. 426 pages. This week was good. Next week I plan on finishing three series. So look out for that. I got some ideas for some videos I have planned because I've been brainstorming a lot, and I know what I gotta do. At least I think I do, but that's kind of this whole, the whole YouTuber experience. You don't know exactly what's gonna work. It's its own art form, but I'm an artist, and we'll figure it out. Thank you guys for watching this week's reading vlog, and I'll see you guys next time.